Hello everybody, I hope you've had a good week. Welcome to this, our benefice service for the sixth Sunday in Easter. Today we're going to return again to the early church, looking at Luke's second book, The Acts of the Apostles, which is the story of what happened to Jesus' first followers after his resurrection and return to the Father. Those were incredible, exciting times as the good news spread like wildfire to Jew and Gentile alike. God made no distinction. Before his departure, Jesus had said to the disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So this was theory into practice. Unsurprisingly, nothing is ever straightforward, but more of that later from Suzanne. So let's now bow our heads and bring ourselves before the Lord in prayer. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptising these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Amen. Amen. Help us, O oh God, to hear your word with attention and understanding, and so write its message on our hearts, that its power may be manifest in our lives. For the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's Bible reading has become a favourite of mine because of how powerful and controversial its message is. All are welcome. Although not in our reading today, the previous verse in the chapter says that everyone who believes in Jesus receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This appears to contradict the relationship between God and the ancestors of the Israelites who were the chosen people in the Old Testament. Or was it that the word everyone could be considered to be everyone who counted? Let's face it, however hard we try, we slip into placing labels on our fellow humans. For me, I think of the problems with being a teenager at school. There were always two categories or labels at school. You were either in the in crowd or the outsiders, the populars or the swats, us or them. For some reason, the two categories, whatever they were known as, were polar opposites. And what's more, they didn't really acknowledge the other category. If the in crowd arranged a disco, I may be showing my age at this point, invitations would be extended to everyone. But everyone meant everyone who was part of the in crowd. It was inconceivable that an outsider would even want to go to a disco anyway. This is what I envisage when I read this passage. The Jews were probably wondering why Peter was even preaching to the Gentiles, as the Gentiles were certainly the outsiders, not conforming to God's laws written in the Old Testament. But then something worse happened. The Gentiles received the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit. Earlier in Acts, Peter had told the Jews that they needed to repent and be baptised in the name of Jesus so that their sins may be forgiven. And only after that would they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I would think that the Jews were not just astonished, they were shocked. These outsiders, these unchosen people had received the Holy Spirit before they had even been baptised. They had certainly crashed the disco. However, this is looking at it from a human way of thinking, using categories or distinctions that we have constructed ourselves. God doesn't use categories we are all his children and he loves us all. And what's more, he loves us just as we are. Whatever our race, nationality, ethnicity, gender, age or position in society. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, he writes, There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. 
God accepted the Gentiles as they had responded to the message that Peter preached with faith. And this faith was acknowledged by the gift of the Holy Spirit. I do wonder if God knew that preaching to the Gentiles would cause problems. And that is why Peter's sermon was interrupted by the Holy Spirit being bestowed on the listeners. A good way of stopping any argument. Who could argue against such an affirmative sign from God? Of course, this didn't mean that all Jewish believers suddenly accepted the Gentiles as equal in God's eyes. This would be a slow process, lasting hundreds of years. After all, it takes time to break down barriers. Do we have barriers? Do we sometimes have mixed feelings about people who are not the same as we are? Are we as welcoming as we could be? Or do our labels get in the way? Human nature means that we all find it easier to talk to people who we know and with whom we have something in common. Do we welcome all as God does? Admittedly, at the moment, there are certain barriers that we have to contend with, which aren't our, our own making. Smiling doesn't have quite the same effect behind a face covering. And not everyone's eyebrows are expressive. But perhaps this week, we could make time to talk to someone who we would not normally speak to. Or perhaps say hello to everyone we meet in the street, not just the people we know. As Christians, we can then show that not only does God welcome all, but we do too, in his name. Amen. As you have called us to be friends, to reveal your love and the joy of your presence, we come with sorrow for the divisions of the church and the world. We seek forgiveness for rivalry and disunity within the church. Lord, strengthen us in love and lead us to a unity that reflects that we are one in you. May any divisions within our community be healed and well-being restored. Lord, as you love us, help us to love one another. We come before you as part of a world caught up in violence, war, hatred, greed and hunger. There are people who are oppressed and treated as slaves. There are people who are counted as nothing, rejected and unloved. Lord, forgive us and change us. Strengthen all who work for the peace and well-being of all. May we share in the care of an all-suffering people. Lord, as you love us, help us to love one another. We give you thanks for all our loved ones, for their generosity and sacrifice for us. Remember, we remember all who feel unloved and unwanted. We pray for homes where there is hatred and or violence, where there is little respect for each other, where there is neglect. We ask your blessing upon all who have been taken into care. Lord, as you love us, help us to love one another. Lord of love, we remember before you all who are lonely. We ask your blessing upon those who are ill or injured. We pray for all 
who are raging against life and all who are not at peace with themselves or the world. We pray for all who have hardened their hearts against love. Lord, as you love us, help us to love one another. We rejoice in your saving love and that you have called us to eternal life. We remember loved ones departed from us. As we give thanks for their friendship, we pray that they may now, but that they may know you as their friend in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Collect for the sixth Sunday after Easter. Risen Christ, by the lakeside, you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our Benefice Prayer. Ever-living, ever-loving God, we thank you for our church family and your world that we serve. Grant that we may honour you in our prayer and praise. Share the good news of your love and build up all through loving service. Help us to give everyone a place to belong and a way to follow Jesus. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, that brings us almost to the end of our worship. We hope you've enjoyed the service and we're looking forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Please bow your heads once again for our final prayers. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower us and fill us with Christ's peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon us now and evermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Go well, stay safe, see you soon. Good night. to celebrate
consume.